the international human rights attorney, the author of a book that came out a few years ago called Saving My Assassin, and uh, fellow uh, Dallas resident that I uh, can't believe I haven't met until just now, Virginia Proden. Hello, Virginia. How are you? I am doing fine. I am doing fine. I want to, I am so happy to be here. And when you have the television show, I was on your television show several times. You look so familiar. Yes. That's why yes. I remember yes. now. Yes. yes, you did uh, several, several programs. Yeah, and yeah, yeah. I was on the socialist one and later yeah, on on yeah, several. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yes. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So good to see you again. Good to see you. So um, I don't, I, d- did I know your story uh, back then, did I know the full story? No, when I was on the socialist uh, part of the yeah, story yeah. Uh, on the television, the book was not published yet. Right, and you were talking about yeah. what life was like. Yes, yes, exactly. yes, yes. I remember mm-hmm. that. So, um, Virginia, let's start with your let's start with your story. Mm-hmm. How old were you? You're in Romania, which is horrible, horrible, one of the worst places under communism because of Ceausescu. Yes, right. Mm-hmm. Tell me about life under him and what that was like. I was maybe around six years old Mm -hmm. when I started to notice that my parents were very politically correct outside of the home. And they were fearful and giving away all their rights. But I also heard them inside of home whispering how horrible the government is and the fact that tomorrow they're going to take more rights. And as a kid, I was petrified. I was scared to death, thinking my life doesn't count to my parents or to my uh, uh, to, to the, our government. And, but also a fire came inside of me. And I was thinking, I don't want to live like my parents. I do mm. not want to grow up and live like them. I want to find the truth. Why people, adults, know the truth, but don't speak up about the truth. And with that came the idea, because I had around in my family lawyers that had questions to um, different, um, you know, problems, but they never, they were never courageous to uh, speak up. Right. I thought, I will go to law school and I will find the truth and I will speak up for the truth. So you um, you get there, you're in law school, you go and mm-hmm. um, you begin to live your life now as an adult. Mm-hmm. And what stops you from doing what most adults do mm-hmm. uh, and, and say, it's too risky. I'm not going to. I have to have this job or I can make a difference by being quiet in the system. Uh, first of all, I want to say when you as an adult are uh, quiet and don't say anything, uh, look around because your kids and, uh, and your people and neighbors mm-hmm. are looking at how you respond today. Uh, second of all, I went to law school and I study. Hey, wait, thinking- wait, 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 wait. Before you go on to that, there are people that believe now that they are in the majority and those who believe they are in the minority. Mm-hmm. And people don't stand up at work because they're afraid that they are the only one or that they're, they'll be left out hanging. They'll be the only one that will say anything. And all these people that whisper in the hallways and say, I'm with you, won't say anything. Mm-hmm. So how do you get past that? Okay. Uh, from my own example, and you'll learn uh, later on, is um, we always said, if she stands up, I will stand with her. Okay, so everything starts with you. You stand up for for the truth and speak the truth politely and nicely and let God, if you are Christian, to uh, protect you. After all, your job, it's not comes from your boss. Respect your boss, but your job and your resources and your life and your freedom Mm -hmm. comes from God. And if you have that solid uh, foundation, you will stand up and you will be amazed how many people will stand up with you, but start with you. So the most forbidden book in all of Romania is? It was at that time uh, the Bible. And the reason is 
because and the reason is why right now as christians we are marked we are marginalized and even threatened to lose the job is because if you are a christian you have a solid foundation and you are loyal to christ you respect your boss you respect your government but you know that your government and your boss are there because god established them in your life but they are not the ones giving you the job or um, the orders of how to live your life yes exactly how to live your life and for that reason when you have that yes you might lose your job you might be under house arrest like i will explain like i was but at the end you will you will see the victory uh, that's if you forget everything from my story think about i fought against the most powerful and cruel dictator in the in the west eastern uh, bloc he had everything on his fingertip he had an army he had uh, money he had even the western civilization that was he lied to before mm-hmm. i started to speak up and he's dead and I'm alive. We belong to a team when we stand on Christ's ground. We belong to a team who never lost a battle. Christ never lost a battle. If you want to be victorious, forget about fear, be courageous, remain with Christ, and you will see the victory. You're remarkable. Okay, so you find the Bible, you start to read the Bible, mm-hmm. and this makes you say, I, I, okay, I, I have to stand up right now. Mm-hmm. And so what did you start doing? Well, before I find the truth, I I want to say that after years or a year and a half or something, two years of practicing and every day going to work in Romania thinking, today I'm going to find the truth. I'm going to speak up for the truth. One day I came to my office and I was almost ready to give up my profession. I put my uh, briefcase on my secretary's desk and I said, I can't find the truth. I, I don't want to be a lawyer anymore. She looked at me like, what are you dreaming about? Where have you been? And she gave me three files and said, there are three people coming to you and one is in your office. I took the files and I walk into my office and I remember seeing the the client that um, I have been working with him for more than a year was a good client, um, and he came because he had new situation in his uh, case. And as I stood in uh, on my chair uh, looking at him, I watched him again. I hated this man for the confidence that he had, the joy that he had on his face. And many times I was thinking, I need to fix this man. He's crazy. He is <laughs> <laughs> He's joyful in a joyless land. He's hopeful in a hopeless land. He must be crazy. Mm. And as I look at him that day, desperate and thinking, I'm going to give up my profession. I can't find the truth. I said to him, I wish I had in my life what you have in your life. And he looked at me and said, do you go to church? And I stared at him thinking, I knew you are crazy. I don't know why I ask you. Because in in Romania, in the Soviet Union, Mm -hmm. church was more than just frowned upon, and uh, it was deemed like it is now, really, you know, just a bunch of crazy people that believe in a ghost in the sky. It was worse than that. Uh, Like a month ago before um, my client was in my office, the dictator declared himself God and require all of us to go to worship him. So when he said... Sincerely he said that? Yes, yes. Oh my gosh. He (laughs) declares there is no limit when uh, a man in the government, especially in a socialist uh, government, has full power. There is no limit. And he declared himself God. So when... It's it's weird. In, In Nazi Germany... It took the churches, not all of them, but it took the churches uh, about six months to remove the picture of Christ off of the altar and replace it with Adolf Hitler. Six months. Six months, yes. 
Yes. So when my client said, would you come to church? I said, yes. And I was petrified. I was thinking, what are you saying? A month ago, he, he declared himself God. I don't know who they worship. But I said yes, and the next Sunday I was in his, uh, in his church because I was that determined to find the truth. And there I heard the pastor opening the Bible and say, Jesus Christ said, I am the truth, the way, and the life. Nobody comes to the Father except through me. And that day I accepted Christ, and that day I understood that God put on my heart the desire to find the truth, which is Christ, not a notion in a law books. And from that day, I realized that God had an appointment on my life to defend Christians and human rights cases. I didn't have to look for cases. People will come to me because nobody will take the cases. Everybody was uh, fearful that if you take the case, you will go to jail. And that's kind of what happened to you. Yes, yes. Mm -hmm. So tell me about the case or the situation that they came to arrest you. What were you doing? I defended Christians who will take uh, uh, Bibles from one church to another for vacation Bible school. I will defend uh, doctors who will give prescription to their clients and with the prescription or a little piece of pa paper will give a Bible verse. They will be threatened, they will lose their job. Or I will defend churches who will put, who will ask the government for years to uh, let them maintain the church and the uh, government will put them on the waiting list until the um, uh, um, church will be in disrepair and the government will say, it's dangerous, we uh, take the, we demolish the building and take the, the land. And the list goes on and on. Did they yeah. warn you to stop doing cases yes, like that? Every, every single day, unknown to me, and I want to mm. say it to your audience, you have to be aware that when you fight and you stand up for what is right, for religious right, mm -hmm. for God's principle, God will do things to protect you and to um, advance your work that you are not going to be aware of. When I was in Romania, behind the Berlin Wall, I had no idea that my cases were part of United Nations report on human rights violations mm. or United States reports on human rights violations. Mm. I had no idea. Later on, wow. congressmen like Frank Wolf and Congressman uh, Smith, Christopher Smith, will come to Romania and talk with me first and then mm. talk with dictator because before I started to defend uh, Christians, they will go and talk with the dictator and the dictator will say, we mm. don't have any problems. We respect the human mm. rights because uh, President Reagan gave them um, and the American government gave Romania the most favor national status mm. attached with respecting the um, Christian Christians. and, and uh, human rights cases, but he didn't respect that. So now they will come, the Congressman Frank Wolf and Christopher Smith and Secretary of State will come to me and talk about my cases and then go to dictator. And the dictator will lie to them and say, oh, we don't have any cases. And they will say, let us tell you about the cases. So okay. you, you hang, can imagine. Hang on just a second. We, we are talking to Virginia Proden. You have to read her book, Saving My Assassin. She's an international human rights attorney, and she is telling, uh, about to get to the part of the story where she is arrested and horrible, horrible things uh, happen. But she's sitting here happy and, uh, and full of joy. We're going to continue our conversation in just a second. So, Virginia, you are being warned, the people around you. You have the same secretary that looked at you crazy at this yes. time? Yes. Uh -huh. Did she know you were in trouble? Yes. In fact, every single day um, after I will take my kids to school, um, I, in fact, by the time I left the house, I will have uh, secret uh, police following me as I will take my kids to school and then they will take me to interrogation. 
they will tell ask me to um, to stop what I'm doing. They called me an enemy of the state because they said that when I was allowed to go to school, um, I, I I was supposed to defend the government against people, uh, mm-hmm. you know, that speak up against uh, the, the government. government. Yeah. In fact, uh, I would like your audience, especially the ones that love socialists so much, to read my book and to read what the requirements are in a socialist country to go to school. You are not the one decided your profession. The government decides your profession. And I explain in, in my book exactly how, uh, how the that government... Is, that is coming now just through software. I mean, the public-private partnership and what we had with Common Core... Bill Gates was talking about we can we can figure out what profession they'd be best at and then just streamline them exactly the way the communists did, except now it's yeah. an algorithm mm-hmm. uh, and we'll streamline them. And with the public private partnerships that are being established now with the government and, and high tech and the schools, that is what's coming here. Yeah, but we still have power. It's a lie that they are saying to you that you don't have power. I am under five feet tall. I was 82 pounds in Romania and a woman, still a woman, uh, which in socialist, in socialist, it's nothing, not what they lie to you. And I still fight, find, uh, found the, the power to, uh, to fight okay. for me and for generations to come. That is a really important key to remember. You're not fighting for you, but generations to come.